Hey guys, how are you? Let me let this thing get started just for a second. There's a lot of you here, 132 already here. Guys, go ahead and hit the like button. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm still, I still had like 20 minutes to listen to. Um, I was blow drying hair, all the things, uh, trying to get stuff done. Um, I'm just like, oh my God. Some listening to this interview, um, at first hearing Tasha K let okay. I guess a couple different things. Let me just get uh, you guys talk to each other and I'm gonna just tell you kind of what happened. But I'm gonna watch I'm gonna listen to this again. I'm gonna start it from the beginning so I can get everything so I can talk to you guys about it. Um, because tomorrow I'm getting my hair braided and I know mine's only gonna take like an hour or two. Fair is gonna be in there for like six hours. So I will go live from outside the braiders and I will talk to you about everything um point by point. But I um whew. okay, it's hard to listen to like when you know you know what's going on, and then you kind of, you know, Tasha K. I think probably got a briefing from her people, her team. She probably got a briefing. I'm sure she's not following the case. Clearly, Tasha K has a lot of other stuff going on and she's dealing with lots of lots of content, right? So, um Okay, I'm going to leave that right there. Um talking to Sonia, Sonia, and I've said this a million times, she's not reliable. She's not a reliable narrator. She's not going to tell you anything that's going to not put her in a good light, her and her and her best friend now, her bestie. And she's sticking with the story that Nesto is her friend and all they were were friends. And, um, they're just friends. They talked every day. They had like motivational, inspirational phone calls. He would call, check in on her. They became friends because she was hospitalized due to some gunshot wounds that she sustained back in 1991. Why she was put in the hospital in 2020 for something that happened in uh, 2019, 30 years later, I do not know. I have no idea. Someone commented on TK's commented on TK. So she's not the side bitch or a mistress. She's a dumb bitch trying to save your life. Okay. Um, let me tell you this. So right when I got off, um, the thank you, Lulu. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, let me give you a heart. I don't know if you can see when I heart this or not, but thank you so much. Um, Tasha K, let me tell you, so Tasha K is just getting ready to lay into her, which I was like, okay. Um, she's like, look, this is what this is. And I'm quoting Tasha K was like, I think he, I think he, uh, you two were involved in an elaborate, um, organization. He was out here selling dick, scamming women. This is Tasha K. Wait, hold on a second. Let me, let me drop my banner. Cause this is <laughs> girl. Um, she was out there here selling dick, <laughs> scamming women, and he's something like a Tinder swindler. And and uh, Sonia was like, Tinder swindler? I'm jumping around. Um, and she's like, no, what's that? And she said, yes. She said, I think <laughs> basically, and all the women that he has came for are now coming forward and pressing charges, talking, whatever they were involved in. And basically, that's what I think is happening. That's kind of where I dropped off at. So I need to, I want to finish it and then I'm going to restart it in, you know, tonight. I'm going to, I want to listen to the whole, whole thing. Cause y'all, I was cooking dinner, washing hair, blow drying hair, you know, serving my husband dinner. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all, I got every hat in this house, you know, along with everybody else. We're a small family. Everybody got to do everything, right? Um, on top of, I'm a YouTuber, so I'm trying to get you guys your content. <laughs> anyway, but when Tasha K said, I think he is, he's been out here scamming and selling dick and people are coming after him now. Um, and he's been scamming and this, that, and the third, I was like, okay, now we get into the good part. Okay. So, but Sonia says that she got shot in 1991. She was shot by a ex-boyfriend. He came in the house. Um, 
The guy who shot her is actually dead. He was killed by someone else who the man had shot, um, I guess, six times. That person got the gun, you know, the girl, anyway, unalived, the one who shot her. Um, but she got shot in the arm, the chest, and something else. Um, he basically was trying to kill her, and she survived. And I guess she was severely hurt and, or obviously, and she, um, uh, you know, she still has complications, I'm assuming from it, but one of the, co the complications, it landed her in Piedmont hospital. Like we heard about her bankruptcy. It's so funny how the only things that on these calls were a lie is anything that has to do with them being horizontal in bed. But, you know, um, and then she did say, um, I think she had insurance fraud is one of her crimes um, in 1996. And Tasha Kay was basically like, look, and, and and on top of the fact that these women are coming back for him, maybe you even had something to do with it because you seem to know a little bit too much and you're defending him just a little too hard. She says that he was, she. this is how she says she met him. She said she was driving down the street one day and she was looking for a property to rent because she wanted to open up a gay club. I'm like, let me, girl, I had to start a note. I had to start writing notes down in my notebook, okay? So now she wants to open a gay club on top of damn restaurants, strip clubs, sports bars, you know, everything, land developer, shop owner, all the things, but she was, she was looking for property to rent and she saw this good looking black man walking into a property and she wanted to find out from him, uh, get the information so she could find out who she could call to rent the property. And he's like, I'm sorry, ma'am. I've already rented this. I was thinking to myself, uh, okay. I thought that, well, I don't know. I know that they met one night outside of an RV, but maybe they'd already met. I have no idea. She said, that's the story she told Tasha Kay. Let me tell you something. If I didn't learn one thing from this interview is that Sonia is not a, she's 100%. And I mean, I don't care. 100 times 100 times 50. However much you want to say it, all the way 100, whatever. Sis is a damn unreliable narrator. You cannot believe anything she says. She can tell you 50 million ways to something that we know is fact. None of it is true other than that we know that, you know, H-E-B is H-E-B. <laughs> you cannot believe her. She does not tell, like, the fact that she is sitting there saying that she and Nesto were never anything is such a fabrication. Anything that, so the blogs are being blamed for everything of which I, I'm not taking any of that blame because some of the stories I don't even discuss. Um, something about him being a child molester, you know, um, I don't even, we don't even talk about that over here. We, I know that he has CP charges there's something about some pictures and that's pretty much it. What I can also tell you is this. She says that regarding the CP charges, that Nesto has a very old computer. He bought his computer secondhand and he can't really be responsible because whenever he bought the computer, no matter if it was wiped clean or not, if there was something on there that he didn't know about, he didn't know about it. So how is he the most unluckiest man in the world who's got essay charges. So all of a sudden you got a man who is being uh, accused of rape, essay, sexual servitude, all kinds of weird shit. And he happens to be the unluckiest man who goes to whatever store that has weird shit on computers for sale. <laughs> really? You just so happen to be the unluckiest man in Fulton County with all this stuff going on. And oops, you have a used computer. Me personally, I would tell Sonia to shut the fuck up 
and never speak on my case again. Because at the end of the day, if it's not your shit, just say it's, I don't even know. I don't know how it got on there. I don't watch that kind of stuff. I don't know anything about it. There's never been anything downloaded and I don't know anything about it. This chick is making up a story talking about he got a used computer. What? The fact that y'all sat there and made this shit up or tried to figure out something or you came up with a bright idea. If you never asked him, she claims she never knew he was married until he told her like three weeks or three months after she met him. He didn't have on a wedding ring. Every single picture we see him in Instagram, he has on a wedding ring. This guy was so happy to have a wedding ring on because he's such a fucking bum. Nobody else would ever marry him. Shirley and her silly behind wanted to be married so bad. She married this guy because he looked good in a suit and a tuxedo. You think he took that wedding ring off? He was happy to have affairs with his wedding ring on. So this man's walking around with a wedding band and you don't you think that you need to ask him he's married? The wedding band says it all. What do you think he's wearing a wedding band for fashion? He's wearing a wedding band cuz the man is married, dummy. A man shouldn't have to tell you he's married when he has a band on. A man only has to tell you he's married when he doesn't wear a wedding ring. And she claims she didn't know who Shirley was, but she's not a fan of Steve Harvey. The fact that she has to say, um, like she had kind of attitude about not being a fan of Steve Harvey. The fact that she had to have attitude about not being a fan of Steve Harvey, because Tasha can't even said why. Like the way she said it made Tasha K ask, like, why? Like, that's we like, you know, not that it's weird, but just like there was some energy, right? I'm just not a fan. So you know who Steve Harvey is, but you don't know who anybody is on his show, especially his sidekick, his co-hostess. You know enough to know you don't like him, but you don't know, you don't, you're not even familiar with the show. The black woman who's been on the show with him for over 20 years. See, I'm just, this is now, I'm going to enter my opinion. Sonia, there's some weird something between Nesto and Sonia like they found each other. They're two black people that don't like black people and they're weird. That weird stuff about we connected on some RVs. So they met, so Sonia met him outside uh, on Peachtree going into a property. I think it was possibly the property that he for that he um got evicted from. Um because she said I he was walking into a property on Peachtree and he said that he had just leased it, right? And it was for lease and he was he had just leased it and he was walking in to take the sign down. And remember, we went to his Instagram and he was going into that location. It was on Peachtree and then the back of it loops around to F Far Road. And so, but it's listed as two different leases that's the place that's, I think that's what they were talking about possibly. So it's possible they may ev have even met on that day. Maybe, I don't know if it's the same place. I, I want to say if, because if you say anything wrong or you speculate, she will go do an interview or get on her, on her microphone and say that people are lying on her. She's such a weirdo. Sonia, if you're in the bushes, you are a weird ass bitch and stupid. Okay. That story you told about the computer is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And keep, keep them coming because if anybody listened to anything, if Fonnie and Shay are listening and drinking wine and laughing tonight about this whole thing on how stupid you two are good because Nesto, it sounds like a complete idiot. Nesto had an opportunity to talk to the world today directly and he curses. He, he was so ignorant. The fact that Shirley could have this man as a husband and put him in a tuxedo, white tie and tails <coughs> and have a lavish wedding with a, um, a well-known pastor, have guests, celebrities, wedding gifts, all of these things. <clears throat> this man is so ignorant and trash. 
Oh my God. I would be so embarrassed. He's disgusting. The way he talked to Tasha K. Um, this guy, it's it's weird. He's very, he sounds violent. He sounds extremely angry. He lost his shit. <coughs> I'm sorry, my throat's getting dry. He lost his shit completely. Any of you guys watched it, you heard it. It was very disgusting. Now, was she recording? It's possible. I was trying to see later if I could see her phone, how we could see it kind of towards the beginning, that little clip that uh, Tasha pulled, where you could see that her phone appeared to be recording on video mode. Um, after she got off the phone with Nesto, she was playing around on the floor and looking down. You'll see when you, I don't know if Tasha K is going to show this on her channel tomorrow or one day this weekend or whatever. Um, but when you watch the interview, she gives the phone to Nesto. She starts looking down on the floor. I, I don't know what she was doing. It's quite possible. I'm not going to give her the benefit of the doubt, but I'm just going to speculate. It's quite possible that when we saw her in the studio, getting that sneak peek in the studio, and she posted that over to her channel, I'm wondering if maybe she just didn't turn off her phone and threw it on the floor. I don't know. Um, but she is going to get the benefit of having recorded and have some audio that she probably shouldn't. Um, and it looked like she was looking down and maybe playing with the phone when she handed the phone over to Tasha K. Um, she's running also with a narrative that she is in a relationship. She has a guy that she's dating. She was, she's dating a guy who she's like 23 years older. She met him on a dating app. Tasha K asked her what dating app she's on. She didn't have an answer. She's allegedly dating some guy. Tasha K took the phone, tried to show it to the camera. She's like, oh, we're going to find him now. And uh, But it was blurry. You couldn't really see. But she held it up to one camera, so possibly her cameras did capture it. Um, and that's going to be good for Sonia's ass because she probably pulled someone up either that she's playing with or someone who doesn't know any better that he's dealing with a whole trash can. Um, She's just, it's just the lies for me. I just, I don't like feeding my brain with disinformation. You know what I mean? Like, I think Tasha K was doing a very good job with what she had in front of her. Um, so when she started to slice her up towards the end part of what I saw, because there was still like 20 something minutes left, but I saw you guys all congregating in here and I didn't want to be too late. So I said, let me go ahead and talk to you guys a little bit. And whenever she posts it, I guess we'll be able to react to it then. But she has threatened hell and high water if anybody is to stream or show any bits and pieces. And, you know, it, that's fine. I don't have any time for that. Um, you guys, trust me, with the amount of, other than the the sheer lies that Sonya told in the lot in the live uh in their inner in the interview excuse me i've been at this all day guys um with the exception of the lies like it's entertainment you know what i'm saying now as far as knowing the truth these i mean that's the one thing i don't enjoy sometimes about you know it's the spin doctoring um what they used to call it you know back in the 90s um, I guess today they call it controlling the narrative, but they used to call them spin doctors and basically come through and try to, you know, find a different angle, um, and make some lemonade out of a shit show. And that's basically what I think Sonia's is trying to do. And like the way she, they tried to make it seem like Ernesto, some sort of old man when it's like, sis, you're, he's three years older than you, boo boo. He's three years older. He's 58. You're 55. What the hell? You keep calling him an old man. You sitting up there with your titties out, putting on your reading glasses. Like, sis, he's old. You're old. Like, at the end of the day, you're not fooling anybody. I, I It's just, it's, it's crazy, y'all. It's crazy. Um, and, like, for those of us who've been watching this whole time, because... I feel like I've been following this like at least since July. I feel like we were talking about this maybe before the riverboat situation happened. Um, so he'd already been in jail for almost a year at that point. 
or over a year at that point. Somewhere at, th at that, I'd have to go back and look and see when we really started following this. But I used to talk about this case and there would be like 20 people in my life. Nobody really cared. Nobody gives a shit about Shirley, to be quite honest. And it wasn't until it started to get juicy and hearing about the potential mistress that it got kind of like, ooh, okay. And what are the charges? And charges keep coming. And is he a scammer? And all of those things, right? And then it, it's just like, this case kind of mushroom, but she really, really, really gets the impression that this is all about her. But let me see what else I wrote down. Um, let me see. So gunshot, they met, she said, I thought she said they met in March of 2020. And then she says two months later. So maybe it was September. Cause she said two or three months later, that's when she was hospitalized. I'm going to have to go back and listen again because sis might just be lying so hard now it's not adding up. So that's something I need to remember. Um, she was married before. She says she was married for four whole months. This twit made it four months of marriage, okay? Four months. You got to be a pretty dumb, dumb dummy. Um, I don't know. It's She had one boyfriend that shot her in 1991. She had the guy in 1996 who stole her car. I forgot what else he did, but that's how she ended up with the insurance fraud charges. Then she married some other dude and ended up marrying him for four months. It sounds like this. The only thing that this woman did for me was solidify the fact on this chick has no discernment. She has no ability to pick a decent man. The fact that she is a ride or die for this type of guy just tells me like, ooh, confirmed. 91, 96, four months of marriage, on the damn phone every day with a married man with a litany of charges who can't even barely speak English and he was born here, okay? Like, it's just a complete and total mess, right? And she is his spokesperson, Sonia is in charge, everybody. Sonia's in charge. Um, let me see what else it says. It says that she has an idea. Oh, yeah. She said she had no idea who, who Shirley was. And yeah, not a fan of not a fan of Steve. She says that they've never had sex. She's not a side chick. She says, in actuality, her and Nesto have only met five times since she has known him. They've only seen each other in person five times. Meanwhile, did you not say on the phone calls when he was coming through and seeing you every other, you know, seeing you, and then you were like, oh, shit, I really, when do we see each other twice in a week or two days in a row? When do we see each other? And you came through that night and you were just holding me and da 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 da. Didn't didn't I not just play that call last week? Didn't I play that call last week? If you didn't listen to it, get into it. It's in the playlist. There's a whole playlist. We talked about it. I played that call last week, and they were sitting there talking about all kinds of stuff talking about, I thought you were a pimp when I met you. So when, when Tasha K, so I need to listen to Tasha K's get ready. And when Tasha K starts to get into her about the criminal enterprise, and I think that he was selling dick and da, 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 and this, that, and the third, I guess this is, I guess, you know, when I come late over here, maybe we'll just call it the after party moving forward anyway, because I like that it's late and we're talking real reckless and using words like D-I-C-K and all that other stuff, right? Um, I'm just I'm just being open, right? <laughs> um, you know, she she had a lot to say then. She was like, well, no, no, no. Like she was getting ready to start to defend herself and all this stuff. Tasha Kay was like, yeah, no, this is what I'm hearing. But anyway, like I said earlier today, Fonny was on an interview today on whose channel was it on? Some some jazz channel in Atlanta. I swear I found it real last minute, like it was getting ready to end. I promise you, if I had had the chance to get my call, my question heard, 
I was trying to run through a question, y'all. I was asked, I wanted to get a comment on what they had to say if they were familiar with the Ernest Williams case, husband of Shirley Strawberry. Can you please comment? Can you please comment? Um, it was on WJZA, Smooth Jazz Atlanta. That's where they were today. Fonny, Shay, and who else was here? Hold on. Um, it's Grown Folks R&B type channel. Uh, not R&B, jazz. Uh, DJ Art Artrell. DJ Art Terrell. Um, on the afternoon vibes, and yeah, I it's obviously Shay and Fonny, and it's someone else. Fonny got on her damn remember those Uggs, the black Uggs with the um, the black sparkly Uggs that were on Oprah's favorite things. Why she's wearing a black dress with her black sparkly Uggs, <laughs> um, and then Shay has on a leather shirt and some leggings. Okay, okay, Fulton County downtown. Um, but yeah, if I could have got my question through to the ladies, because Shay, I mean, I don't know if Shay read her letter or not from Nesto from last week or two weeks ago. Um, but, you know, Fani does have a case on her hands that's well over 500 days. And the bottom line is, is, you know, even if they had to let him on the streets just to pick him back up again, at the end of the day, they do need to do something with it because I think the man legit is going crazy. He is quite belligerent and very disrespectful. And I, I don't know. Clearly he did not have permission for this interview because he was calling Sonia on the phone and she didn't pick up and she's like, Oh, he'll call back. Cause we know he's a bugaboo. Dion said that he is a certified bugaboo. So when she didn't pick up, legit he ended up he called right back he hung up and called right right back and he immediately she was like hey i'm here at the interview and, and tashke was like was this planned did you tell him to call at this time and she this is after they got off the phone she goes well he knew i was going to be in the interview but i did not tell him to call yeah right so Anyway, she probably, Sonia gives all kinds of, I'm going to be your mom and jerk, okay? So um, that's basically how the call came through. He was calling her. He, she didn't pick up. He called right back, and then she answered the phone, and she says, I'm here at the interview. And um, Tasha K was like, well, let me, would he want to speak with me? And she said, yeah. And then, um, and then he got on the phone and, and, you know, they blase blase, but he was quite belligerent. Um, I definitely, I hope that when she, she releases it soon so we can all listen to it together. Um, but you know, she's, she's, like I said, she has threatened hell and high water for anybody who takes her content off of her site. And I respect that it's on her website and, that it's not on YouTube and you know, it's, it's certainly protected and all of that. So I'm not even going to go there with her. Cause she, she also, you know, also was like, you know, the, the winos are everywhere. So basically that means that anybody who's anywhere, I guess she's got a bunch of people who don't mind, you know, reporting and snitching and all that stuff. And like, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So let me think of what else happened. Um, I don't know what I, I didn't hear Sonia's criminal charges, but she did cop to insurance fraud um, and 96 being shot. Um, she says they never had sex. She says they've only been they've only seen each other five times. And then um, Tasha Kay starts asking her about the pictures and then they play a long clip of one of the phone calls. And it's the one when he's talking about you know, he sure does miss having some good putty and, you know, go ahead and take those showers. And if it starts popping, pat it and, you know, all that stuff. Ex exactly. Team Shirley. Right. Um, you about to fuck around and fun. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I, I still had about 20 minutes to watch. So, um, I didn't get to finish it, but I'm going to finish it up. Um, He's been charged. She hasn't been invited in indicted yet, Ron Robin. Excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so tired. It's been a long day. I started streaming with you guys early, early, early today. And I feel like I've been on and off 
I have been on and off all day. Like, let the truth be told. But yeah, he has been charged. He has not been indicted. So he could not be in jail if he hadn't been charged. So there's arrest warrants and everything. But the indictment, so the review of the grand jury um, and the actual indictment that basically certifies. So it kind of certifies from between the police department. So basically, and this is my layman's view of what a indictment is for maybe those of you who don't know. I think basically, so the police, you know, get a complaint. They issue um, a warrant based on whatever the complaint is let's say robbery, rape, theft, whatever, and they package it up and they get an arrest warrant from a judge. They tell the judge they have reason to believe they have probable cause that someone has done this, that, and the third. So based on the probable cause, they arrest somebody, right? They arrest that person, they put them in jail, and with the package, the evidence that they have collected, they deliver that over to the to the prosecutor and a grand jury and they review all of it and decide whether the package is complete and you can actually go to trial with that. And then there comes the indictments. Yes, the formal charges. So it's basically a review board of, is this valid? Is this enough evidence? Is this, does this stick? Um, because you can have something go to a grand jury and it not pass, but then you can, go back, get more evidence and then bring it back to another grand jury. And they're going to say, yes, let's do this damn thing. Right. And then you get the indictment and then <laughs> we go into court. Okay. Let's get these, the trial date or everything that we have seen so far have been hearings about what, you know, about the evidence it's been bail hearings and things of that nature. When Ernesto talked about final plea, um, his first attorney actually put in a plea for him and waived his arraignment. So he's saying, well, I've never had an arraignment, this, that, and the other thing. Well, Sonia, why don't you tell your boyfriend that his first lawyer, BC, has waived his arraignments way back when he first was arrested and put in not guilty pleas for him. So as far as him going back and forth and pleading not guilty in person, that didn't happen because that man that you paid $40,000 to went ahead and signed your name on documents, putting in your not guilty plea. So you never had to go plea because he waived those hearings. Okay. And like I said earlier, if you weren't so busy trying to talk to, to Sonia about titties, maybe you would know a little bit more about what's going on with your case. Okay. Um, Sonia admits she's releasing all the calls on her channel. Go right on ahead. Like, she's not going to hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? Because I do reactions, reviews, and commentary, and she's turned into a whole uh, mommy channel, as far as I'm concerned. And as far as uh, phone calls from prison, I mean, they release calls on other people. Other Like, Ernesto is not the only convict uh, who probably has juicy calls on top of the fact that um, they've already been... They went viral for Alex Murdoch before Ernesto was even a thing. Okay. That's how I found them. Okay. On some Alex Murdoch. So, and Susan Smith. So, boy, ain't nobody worried about no Sonya. Sonya ain't making moves. Wait, let's, let me go see how many subscribers Sonya has from, from going on Tasha K and, and, and making a complete ass out of herself. Let's see if she got a thousand subscribers yet. Let's, let's go take a look. Okay, let's see. Let's see if Ms. Waller. Her name is Ms. Waller, but uh, let me not give her any ideas. Oh, let me see. Girl, she got 840 subscribers. I have never seen like, ma'am, uh, what, what Sonia needs to know is that sis. You got to be kidding, right? Maybe she thinks she's doing something. You just been you were just featured on a channel that has 1.1 million subscribers. There were 12,000 people in a live stream. 
People go live on your name every single day. And sis has 840 40 subscribers. That's it. That's it. And that's all. Um, she put Tasha K in the title interview recap, seven minutes long. And she's got 3.8 K views. Nobody's interested, sis. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Um, we did review that. So I will drop the, um, let me drop the link to my playlist. I'll go ahead and get this into the playlist. Um, and if you're new here, welcome. Uh, I do have a playlist that will help you out if you want to get up to speed on this topic. I don't know if you guys, what do you guys think that she was recording? I wouldn't be surprised if she was recording Tasha K. I would not at all. But Tasha K was real cool as a cucumber. And... Then she started to lay into her. I'll have more information tomorrow. Once I go, once I get my hair braided and um, I can sit in the chair, that's when I can listen to it start to finish um, as my hair is getting laid in the morning. Um, listen to it and then come back to you guys fresh. But I've been at this pretty much all day and had a sick kid at home and all that. So forgive me, guys. I did the best I could. Um, and then I was having sound issues and that kind of freaked me out. Hey, Ty Cherie. Hey to everyone. Um, I'm giving you guys a big summary. Hello. Um, but yeah, tomorrow I'll be able to really kind of give you point by point. I know I promised you guys that tonight, but it's, it's just not happening. Um, did she promote her channel? No, she not at the point where I dropped off. I dropped off, I think right at about 50 minutes and it's about an hour and 20 minutes on the website. And the funny thing about Tasha K is, you know, how like you can't stream on multiple devices. So, you know, someone like me, I'm in, I'm sitting at my desk, but then I go to the kitchen. So I had it on my computer and then I got up, I went into the kitchen. I was like, oh, I want to, maybe I'll just log in over, you know, log in on my phone. I logged in on my phone. I came back in and it stopped on the computer. So it's not going to let you stream on multiple devices. It's like a one license type thing. You can log in for multiple devices, but you can't play for multiple devices. You know what I mean? Like it's one license per family, I guess, or one license per user. Um, Cause in theory, you know, but me personally, girl, I could be watching on three. I could have it on the TV, my computer, you know what I mean? Like, it gets crazy sometimes. But anyway, um, any other questions you guys have? I'm sorry to have been all over the place. I did the best I could. That's kind of like my first impressions. Um, if you want me to go through, through, through it, I definitely don't mind talking about this again in the morning um, or, you know, after I've watched this and um, as soon as, because I have a, I have an early morning appointment. So I think I probably should be done. Um, you know, within like an hour and a half, two hours, and then I'll be waiting for Boo Boo uh, to finish her hair. And while I'm waiting, I know I'll be able to talk to you guys. Um, that's okay, girl. Love TB. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Sis, look, at the end of the day, um, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, Everybody doesn't know, you know what I mean? Sometimes people only know what they know. You know what I mean? So I don't find any fault with anyone and I'm not taking it any type of way. I really don't. I just, you know, Tasha K, from that perspective, I just thought her team, I, I just made the assumption that there was a team in place and maybe they do research, but she did preface that, you know, they don't really do all that anymore and they rely on others. And I just, you know, that's it. But that's, you know, it's okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Taishiri. I love you. Thank you. You're so sweet. You're such a sweetheart. Um, After Sonia painted Nesto out to be this wonderful, wrongfully accused guy, he, he calls in and talks like a complete asshole. Black Hourglass, let me just steal your sentence. 
Um, she said he slept with the teacher. He slept with the teacher for a little. She, she, didn't she black hourglass? She threw the teacher under the bus. She did. She threw the teacher under the bus. She's like, she was driving like an, she may as well said an old ass Altima. Like he was doing her a favor by giving her a damn stolen ass car to drive. And, and then picking her up in a damn ambulance, right? Um, he also talked... So right when I left off Black Hourglass, I left off at the point when um, they started to talk about the grape um, with the, 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 the victim. Um, so he says that he was dating... Allegedly, he was dating the teacher. Um, somewhat, so they were talking about the RV... And that when um, Bickham sent the money to the RV dealership, she wired the $90,000 to the RV dealership and the RV dealership is now closed and there's no receipts. So there's no receipts. That doesn't mean that it didn't happen. That's why the victim called weird ass Ty from Danielle Diamonds. Okay. She called Ty to see if Ty could help her with a receipt for Shirley's ring because she knows that some of her money was used to pay for Shirley's big ass diamond ring. Right. But what does Ty do? Ty calls Shirley on the phone. Hey, Shirley, guess what? A detective from Roswell called me and a victim called me. They wanted receipts for when Nesto bought your ring. They wanted that $20,000 receipt, but I didn't tell them anything. And what does Shirley's goofy ass do? do? Shirley's goofy ass picks up the phone, calls Nesto, tells him that Ty from Danielle Ju Jewelers, Danielle Diamonds called him and the victim called Ty also. And they didn't tell Ty anything like Ty didn't tell them anything, but Ty hung up and called me and I didn't confirm anything, but I turned around and now I'm calling you. So on the fact of the Rico and all of these women, it's like Nesto had like a harem of women, all kind of like, this is my opinion, seeing shit, but not saying shit. Okay. And knowing he's not right and knowing he's dealing in some underhanded stuff, but just kind of like letting it go. So I don't know if Ty, Ty from Danielle Diamonds ever gave up. Thank you, everybody, for the flowers. You guys are giving me my flowers. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I receive them. I appreciate that so much. You guys are so sweet. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've been following this case since, you know, I don't want to say since the beginning. I wasn't there when he was probably on the, you know, you know how you go to the gas station, they got Slammer magazine. I didn't, I wasn't there when he was in Slammer. But, um let me see. We know Real Talk Bougie is the real MVP. Those who know, know. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Love TV. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's very sweet. I like her. You know, I mean, I like her style. Let me tell you something. I am always up for a good exposing video. I love YouTube. And YouTube is always full of some shenanigans. Just because I don't just because I don't do those shenanigans, you know, I don't take you know, I don't enjoy watching those shenanigans. Um, you know, there's a lot of sisters out here doing doing their work and being in their life. I'm not gonna knock anybody for doing that, especially in the reaction community. Um, you know, reactors, commentators, all that kind of stuff. You know, I I just like to keep it very cute and stay in my own little lane. And and that's how, you know, I stay, I stay um peaceful. Okay, I like to keep it real peaceful over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I've had my share of not. Um, but like I said, I respect everyone else's lane and I appreciate people respecting my lane. And, you know, I definitely like to keep it very social. And I, you know, I, I thank Sis for shouting me out. I appreciate that very much. And I know we talked about her channel this past week when she was when she was putting that information out. She went she went to work. And she got Sonia out here, come out, come out from wherever you are. She did that damn thing. And, you know, Sonia's out here making a fool of herself on Tasha K. So 
Um, Hannah Rondon got her work. Girl, I posted Hannah Rondon's Twitter. If anybody wanted to send her, I mean, at least send her Tasha Kay's interview. Hannah Rondon is Hannah Rondon on Twitter. And I'm not trying to please nobody bother that woman. But if you want to send her something, um, that's a way to send her something. She's got social media. So and she's a public defender and you have a very public case going on right now. And you need to know that your your client is out here acting like a complete goofball with a complete idiot who is not helping his case one little bit. And I'm certainly not team Nesto at all, but as far as on the strength of Shirley is like, my God, can you shut the hell up? It's bad enough. And when he said, oh, when he was on Tasha K, Black Hourglass, correct me if I'm wrong, he said something about, I don't do criminals with women. I don't even like people that much. I don't even do, I don't even do crimes with women. I was like, oh, so you just do crimes with with guys or crimes by yourself? What? Um, it was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. I really need to listen to it again so I could really, you know, process it well. And I went to the DA's office to know I want the D. Yeah, funny girl. I was trying when I saw it was God. I put on Instagram. I clicked on Instagram, and I'm like, wait a second, that's Shay Alexander. I'm like, wait a second, that's funny. I clicked on it. And the live stream had gone off. And then I went back, found the live, you know, went back and found the channel it was broadcasting from. And then I got on the, I got online to see if I could, you know, see the broadcast live girl. They had, the live had just ended. Okay. The live had just ended. They had just finished up the interview I was like, damn, I, I really wish I could have got Fonny and Shay live on the radio. Like, hey, do you know what's going on in your system? You got a whole weirdo on there who's married to Shirley Strawberry from the Steve Harvey show. He's over there under charges in your county and he is out here acting a pure fool. Do you know about it? He's out here on the radio. Do you know what is going on? I don't know if she has any idea. Do you think Hannah or any of the other attorneys will see this interview? I don't know. If I'm not going to send it because I don't want to seem like I'm bothering her as a as a blogger, but um, you know, anybody else can send it to her. I mean, she's on LinkedIn. I'm sure she Kate takes in messages. You know. She's on. I mean, what's she going to do? Let her. You know what I mean? If Nesto wants to screw himself and be in Fulton County for the rest of his life or Georgia State Corrections, that's his business. You know, um, I just hope that this doesn't off, you know, any victims from coming forward to tell their story, because if you don't have witnesses who want to show up to help fight the case, then. And that's going to be a problem. So hopefully all of the victims are still available. Um, oh, she told a story about Melanie, Melanie Scretchen. And the only reason why I know these names is because I've watched the bill hearings over and over and over again. So um, that's the teacher. Basically, so Sonia was trying to kind of spin it like as a woman scorn type thing. And basically said, I so I guess whenever Ernesto went to jail and or got arrested, uh, Melody Scretchen was concerned because she hadn't heard from him. And she's a teacher. Like you said, she's a teacher. She doesn't have a lot of money. $5,000 to her is probably a lot of money. And you don't have $5,000 to spend on a credit card, do you? Or And, and does Nesto? I mean, this lady at least has enough credit to have $5,000 worth of credit expended to her. Um, and the bills are due. So now all of a sudden he disappears and she's trying to find him. And allegedly, according to Sonia, she basically was writing Shirley up under her Instagram, telling her that she had some things to tell her about her husband and that she needed to get in contact with her because she had news for her. Um, Jen said, didn't love 
didn't love the interview, but it's hard to talk to someone who believes their own lies. She sounds foolish. It was very frustrating, wasn't it, Jen? Like, it was on some, this bitch is such a fucking liar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not calling her a liar. I'm sitting here in my opinion as I was sitting there. I couldn't help but shake my head and think, this bitch is a fucking liar, okay? This is on some after dark. This is on some bougie gang after dark, okay? Lying ass bitch. That's that's what I was thinking in my head, okay? Alleged, you know, on her alleged accusations. I mean, this this chick is so evasive and just such a, you know, spinning everything. It's it's if you came in and didn't know the truth, Somebody dumb will be confused because Tasha K at first I was concerned that she was believing a little bit. Did you think that too, Jen? Um, who are you talking? I'm talking about Sonia. Who? No, the te the teacher is a victim. I'm talking about Sonia. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I'm talking about Sonia. Um, the teacher called Shirley. The teacher called Shirley. Sonia says she has never spoken to Shirley ever. Okay. Um, she's, yeah, she's, she says that the teacher reached out to Shirley because she was trying to find Nesto because Nesto basically was missing from the streets. And that's when Sonia realized something must be wrong. And she was looking under every bridge, rock, and wherever trying to find him and stalking Shirley's page to see, like, was she sad? Was she happy? Was she anything? And just put it together and was like, he's got to be in jail. And I guess she was calling, calling, calling. I don't know what happened. Or maybe, maybe she just was chilling. I'm not sure. But she said she was looking for him for five weeks. Oh, you know what it was? His name was spelled wrong because in the system, he's under E A R N E S T Williams instead of Ernest. And then again, there's a million Ernests in the system. Okay, so let's talk about the discrepancies. One discrepancy blaring, glaring, glaring, or blatant. I guess I was trying to say blatant and it said blaring. Um, was number one was on Tasha K's Tasha K live site. And this could be an oversight, whatever. I'm not picking. Um, she said December 22, he got arrested. It's accurate. It was July. Um, he's been in for a year and a half now. So he was arrested July of 22. And on the teaser, um, the synopsis for the episode, it says December of 2022, and that's not accurate at all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Did I fix that? Okay. Hopefully that's not going to keep playing. Thank you. Is it Valdenise? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I love your name. That's so fancy, Valdenise. Thank you very much. Um, that was one discrepancy, like I immediately noticed. The next thing, what was another discrepancy? Oh, they referenced Jasmine Brand and um, Sandra Rose. Sandra puts on him. Oh, okay. Let me talk about the wife too. Okay. So, uh, Jasmine Brand said that he is... He's got gun charges. That's not true. That's a different Ernest Williams. Um, I can provide the proof of that like this weekend. I'll pull the paperwork. Um, I've got it, but I've got to go through like all of my documents and then set them up so we can look at them. So that, that might have to be like a Sunday thing. Um, okay. Jasmine Brand said he had gun charges. That's not accurate. He's a felon. If he had, if he's already a convicted felon, if he had a gun around him or a gun in his possession, you don't think that they would have already, they would have, a, they would, have, would, there would be a problem bringing forth an indictment. That's just part of conditions of release as a felon. 
that you're not to have gun charges, you know, to have a gun in your possession anymore. Thank you to chef. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that was, that's not accurate. That's the wrong Ernest Williams, but nobody will correct themselves. I'm just going to say it. Um, Jasmine brand. I know you're busy over there at, um, at damn Angela Yee's, but you might want to correct your website and update that because that's not the correct Ernest Williams. And for me, like someone asked me, was I going to reach out or something on some of these discrepancies? It's not my job. Some of these people are like big ass bloggers making lots of money. Jasmine Brand is sitting over there at Angela Yee's every day. What do I need to do her homework for her? You know what I'm saying? That's her shit. I'm just, I just know well enough not to repeat it because I know I have looked into the case. I, I, I'm not doing her homework. And then Sandra Rose, she, when I asked her a question about something, I got back a nice, nasty comment. So I'm not going to be reaching back out to her either to re to tell her that you got it wrong, that you are reporting this, this man is doing a 23 month sentence because he is not. That's a different Ernest Williams. Again, wrong. But unfortunately, Tasha Kay was reading some of this. Now, she said that that's just how messy some of this has been. But instead of making it seem, you know, unfortunately for the way Tasha form, formed it, because Sonia is not sophisticated and she's not an intellectual at all, um, she says, yes, it's the blogs lying. No, I don't think that they were lying. They are wrong. They're ju that's just misreporting. They're not lying on Nesto. That was just some bad reporting, period. So Tasha wasn't stating it as fact as I thought initially, but she was reading from the blogs and was just saying that it's getting messy. Now, she didn't substantiate it by saying we did our own research and found that to not be true but she repeated it and and Sonia was like yes it's getting so messy and they're just lying on him that's not accurate and instead you know whatever but like i said Sandra Rose has it wrong he's not on a 23 month sentence he is a convicted felon he would already be straight back to jail if he if he did what this person did and there is someone already serving the sentence the person's been sentenced and they're in Fulton County already doing two, three months. He is still without an indictment and not even doing a sentence. Like they would say that already. So, okay, that's it. That's one, three, just see. Um, okay. Um, the last thing, the wife. So Sonia, uh, Sonia, uh, Tasha K was like, Oh, it sounds like you guys are in love. You know, like you guys talk every day. It's real intimate. Da, 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 da. He's calling you all of this and that. And she, that's when she said that she had been married before she was married for a whole four months and da, 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 da. And she said, she doesn't want to be someone's sixth wife. I was like, sixth wife, girl, you got some tea. Oh, when Tasha K asked him about, is he still married? Black Hourglass and Jen, did I, am I, am I embellishing on the fact that he lost his shit? If he lost his shit on anything, he really got mad when she asked him about him being married. He said, to the best of my knowledge, how do you know if you're a man like it take it's a different kind of man to be married three and four and five times, right? Um, because some men will never get married once. You know if you're divorced, right? The fact that he said, to the best of my knowledge, I'm married, like wouldn't you just say yes? He said, Yes, we're married. Now she said, Did you ever drop, did you ever deliver your license? Um back for it to be certified and he said we're married i don't know i don't know but then sonia said something about a sixth wife like i don't want to be anyone's sixth wife as if shirley is the fifth but we only know about four including shirley right edith martha carol and shirley um i don't know about anybody else 
she said a six, a number six. I was like, well, damn. Look, I'm going to go back and listen to it, make sure she didn't say five. But even if it's five, we still only know about four, right? But she said a sixth wife. But I was like, damn. And then she said he has six kids and grandkids and da 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 da, whatever. Um, what else was there? It was a lot, and I didn't even get to finish it yet. But when I when I closed out, um, the biggest uh, yes, the biggest lie was the sex part. It was like we just listened to that. I just played those videos, and anybody who wants to go to my videos and take a clip, obviously, you know, phone calls from prison doesn't mind, but just, you know, you can go to a video. You guys know how to run clips, right? You go to a video and, um, let me show you guys, let me share my screen. Guys, let me tell you something after that fiasco earlier, I'm not saying it's not going to happen again, but I, I dumped off apps that I wasn't using. I cleared my whole entire deck. I restarted my computer. <laughs> I unplugged my microphones. I was like, I will not have choppy service again. I was so upset about that this afternoon. Um, okay. Oh, this is my playlist. Let me drop the link for that. Any of you who are new here, again, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, let me drop my link. And I do have a whole complete playlist on this. So there's bail hearings in there. There's court proceedings. Um, we reviewed documents. We've gone to Instagram. We've done lots of stuff. We've gone over to Facebook. It's pretty comprehensive. Um, so you can just start from the beginning if you feel like, oh my God, I'm never going to catch up. No, you can get caught up. You can get caught up right there. Okay. And amongst and many other places. And in any of those videos, if I mention a channel and I drop a link, you all you have to do is make sure that you're watching the chat along with it or looking for the first pinned comment or look in the description box. Typically, everything is there. And if it's not there, drop me a comment. I'm pretty responsive in my comment section and I will get back to you and let you know, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you whatever you need. Okay. Um, if you are wondering how you don't have to take up your memory on your phone to send someone a clip, this is what you do. Do you guys already know how to do this? Am I wasting your time? Let me show you. Um, okay. Let me move this. Of course, stream red wants that crazy again. It's like, okay, there we go. Um, okay, so you're watching this video, right? And you see right here where it says clips. This might seem quite obvious, but maybe some of you don't know, right? So you, right here, clips. Services and you can do are not in return. That's not just a deal gone bad. That's not an investment. I purchased. Okay. So it gives you the option to do at least minimum 50 seconds, but up to 60 seconds. And you can slide the slide bar, do whatever you need to do to collect the timestamp that you want. And you might want to say, Fran, go see this. <laughs> or Sonia bumped her big head okay and then you hit share clip okay and you're not sharing it at that moment you can you can do that you can go run it to facebook wherever you want to do it embed it somewhere or just hit the copy right but then what happens is is when you go over here You go on your sidebar and then it says your clips right here and you click on that. And it's like you have run it to the side. So right here, the clip that I just made, Sonia bumped her head. Okay. The clip is right here waiting for me. That's why sometimes, well, I don't really do that a lot over here. 
But if I have a a clip that I kind of saw and I want to not have to screenshot it or whatever, it's just basically that clip is kind of waiting for me over here. So, um, and then you can do share clip. Um, you can click on watch complete video, all of those things. So I don't know if you guys knew how to do that or what the usefulness of that was, but there it is. Okay. So hopefully that was something helpful tonight. Um, you guys, I, I'm sorry. I didn't take like more, you know, better notes. Um, I feel like I just gave you like a complete download of everything I saw and watched. Um, we'll go over it tomorrow if you want to. And then you guys can call in and ask me some questions. Um, cause I know I'll be waiting for my daughter to finish up her hair. Um, cause they're taking us both at the same time. And I'm just getting, I'm just getting like eight to the back but not eight straight to the back eight to you know like a little design something something cute um to wear until christmas um and that's it um so hopefully i'll be done with that pretty quick and then i can talk to you guys after so let's say nyla that was on nyla that was on tk said that shirley knew about the fil flim flam uh parts because Nestor commented on to her, he will take all the hits for this and you move forward with your life. Um, he said that, yeah, he said, I'll do anything to make sure that your face card stays good. Um, Shirley wanted her husband, so she didn't care. I don't know that that means she knows about the flim flam, but she might know that her husband ain't shit. Like all you have, to, you know, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of men out here who are not very well educated, but they speak with a civil tongue and you can always tell gentlemen, you know what I mean? Just because you may not have a formal education, there's men out here that are gentlemen who may not have a formal education. Nesto, if he feels like you're a street bitch, he's going to treat you like one. Like he's a whole asshole. Like any of you who saw this interview, no class whatsoever. Anyone who saw the interview, like he immediately had, he calls to speak to Sonia. He's one way. He gets on with Tasha K and he's flared up. This man is going to need some re-entry if he got released tomorrow, this dude is so damn angry. I would be afraid, to be quite honest. If I was one of his victims, I wouldn't want to see his ass. Do you imagine if they all of a sudden dismiss the charges like, oops, my bad, and let him go only to maybe pick him up again in the future or keep his ass under investigation, wait for him to do it again, and then they've got this whole dossier on him? I would be afraid to run into this guy because he was very angry talking on the phone to Tasha K. And he's the type of dude that will argue with a woman. Like men who argue with women are trash because at the end of the day, I hate to say it. And I know it's 2023 and maybe some people don't agree with me on this, but men, it's just like how you don't, how we don't argue with children Men should not, there's just kind of like rules of how we engage with each other. And I just don't think that men should argue with women. Now, it's one thing if that's your husband or your brother or your family, but at the end of the day, some random man, especially um, to a woman who is doing an interview with your boo thing, who's, who's there speaking on behalf for your case, you can't even keep it together enough to be respectful, even if you think she's a bitch. He was very rude. And the way, and I'm sure he's mad about his situation, but instead of thinking as Tasha K potentially some help, maybe he realizes like I'm indefensible. I said this the other day. Sir seems to be almost indefensible. And then his attitude is horrible. And to be a grown man and act like he's on grown man things, you're not. It's a lie. It's a lie. Because you had an opportunity to talk to a woman who has a large following, who has a name that people know and recognize, no matter 
how many people who may say, oh, she's a blogger on YouTube. Okay, fine. But Tasha K obviously has reached national notoriety due to the situation with um, Cardi B and et cetera. And at the end of the day, she has a voice. Okay. And it, she might have been able to at least allow you to get your narrative across, but you sat, not only does he sound like you shouldn't even bother to listen to him because it can turn people who are educated and more sophisticated. You hear someone like him talking and it's immediately a turnoff. I'm not even trying to be classist about it, but I think there is a little bit of have and have not with this. This man's riding around in a Rolls Royce and he sounds like a complete and total bum. And without the Rolls Royce, without without the nice clothes, you back to square one, sir. You are back to being treated like your face card says. Bum. You don't have the access passes. I'm sorry. His access to society and FIPS and women who wear $1,000 shoes and carry $5,000 bags was those Rolls Royces. Ferragamo shoes, nice pants, good belts, drinking Prosecco and Rosé in the afternoon at a nice restaurant with a patio, um, looking like something, okay? Without all of his amenities and accessories and accoutrement, he looks and sounds like a fool that he is. And he's with someone who's on his level. And that's called uh, Sonia Waller-Durham or whatever the hell her name is. Okay? And that's pretty much it. I mean, I can't even think of anything. I'm sure I forgot to tell you guys some things, but that's kind of like straight up commentary, what I thought, first impressions. Like I said, Tasha K is very good at what she does. I'm not going to take anything away from her. She's very good at what she does. Um, I will finish it up and then tonight, and I'm going to listen to it from the beginning in the morning, and then we'll talk about it again. I know I still owe you guys the, uh, the last part of Dre. And I think also Sonia should be real salty today about what she heard yesterday, because I don't care if it's from September or not at the end of the day, three months ago, Boothang told you or Boothing told us, Dre, that he's trying to get Shirley back when he gets out. Like, he's just past time with you, and you're you're helping him get through the time, okay? You're nothing but a handmaid. I said that before. You're nothing but a helper-ass little trick mama, okay? If you don't like side chick, do you like helper-ass trick mama? <laughs> Let me stop. Girl. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think she dealt she Tasha K didn't do her homework. I think Tasha K has a team and her team did the homework and they're not familiar. I mean, I'm not trying to give her a pass or anything, but it was like I think her team did the homework and they're not as familiar with this case. This is a very nuanced case and unfortunately whoever she had on her team helping her vet out her notes and to prepare um you know and sometimes i'm going to be honest as the interviewer maybe all the time you don't have to know everything but i think tasha k at the size that she is which you know again she has a lot of reach Someone should have been able to write her a good brief, like a good outline, some good, like a good outline of these. This is, these are the facts. This is the bullshit. Okay. Now page one, this is the facts. Page two, and this is the shits right here. And gave her what she needed to know and made what she wanted to know so she could really prepare for the uh, interview. And, you know, it's that grown woman gave her a lot of, like, the streets, the shits, the gossip, what we heard, all those things. 
Um, but she really needed to like the the Jasmine brand. I'm sorry, and Sandra Rose. I'm sorry. I I do not. Mm -mm, no. And as far as reading the warrants, the warrants have been read. The police reports have been looked up. That's all up in my now. I have not read to you guys the warrants, but I have read the warrants. Um. We have read other documents. Pam has gone through the warrants extensively as an attorney blogger. Okay. Um, Sylvia is a court watcher with a press pass and who has gotten access into Fulton County Courthouse. I mean, there is a line deep of people who have, who, like, it's not all a bunch of income, but maybe that's, you know, I don't know what the fuck Sonia's is doing, but whatever. Um, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I don't expect a woman like Sonia to feel like she's going to fit in over here because we stand on bad bitch shit and she is not. So, mm, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, boo-boo. <laughs> we stand on that bad bitch stuff. So I could understand why she might not feel comfortable sitting at our table because we don't have any room at it. Okay. Pay her dust. Yes, we'll just talk about her. She can't sit with us at all. Okay. She, yeah, period. Um, I don't know. You know, those were the rumors. Okay. Remember early on when we did not know what the document said? I think that those were the rumors. Everyone has not had privy access to, you know, Sylvia went. And down deep, Sylvia's had that stuff out for months. When I told you that Sylvia had that, that stuff had been posted for months about the details on that warrant about the CP. Months. I mean, I'm talking about four or five months. That that video has been up for months, okay? Um, so anyone who doesn't really know about the CP... The reason the CP has nothing to do with Sheridan. It was a bail hearing about multiple different charges. <coughs> the reason why Sheridan asked for a, um, a no contact order. Thank you, Gloria. And thank you. Is that Gloria too right here? Yes, Gloria. Thank you. Um, was because she's scared. She was scared after she dropped the dime on him saying that those were fraudulent signatures. She never leased that place. That pl Her name is on there um, erroneously. And also on top of that, her name is spelled wrong and they've got my mom on here and they don't even have her name accurate. So somebody, someone frauded her. Someone committed some sort of fraud. So yeah, it didn't have anything to do with that. He they put Sheridan and the kids on the list because Sheridan basically was like I don't want him reaching out to me and she's also a victim and she she could be a witness. So they're telling you to not have any contact with her and her minor children. I mean, he has been her stepfather for 10 years, so they just wanted to put it out there. She don't fuck with you anymore. Don't reach out to her. And based on these phone calls, that should be without saying. But, you know, everyone is not, hasn't been privy to that. So um, the information is out there and available. But, you know, that was some of the gossip um, initially. So that's when hearing that, it would, didn't surprise me hearing that. But that has, as far as I'm concerned, has been cleared it, the CP had nothing to do, in my opinion, and based on my research with Shirley's daughter, it just had to do with the fact that that bail hearing involved many different things on top of um, Judge Manning reading off the name. And remember, she said many names. I've got the clip on my channel where she mentioned many different people, and those are all multiple cases. They mentioned... They mentioned almost everybody <laughs> on that bail hearing. And um, 
and it was on a multitude of things. It wasn't just, um, it was on, uh, the theft by taking and the theft by deception. Grown woman's vibes has a, uh, yeah. And you, and you know, that's kind of where, uh, Tasha K kind of cut that off. Cause maybe she hadn't been able to vet that part out. You know, I mean, people can say what they want and she has her opinion. Um, but yeah, I don't know that that's what that was a part of. I think that was, you know, that was some of the gossip that was on the street. So I'd heard that before, but I, I wasn't, you know, and I'm going to be honest, I'm so busy preparing my content for two channels that I really don't. And also because I am talking on the same topic, I'm going to be real honest, unless it's, um, something very specific. I'm not really listening, you know, because I don't want to pick up anything from anywhere else. Cause I really like to give my opinion. I don't want anything in my brain other than delivering my thoughts to you guys. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, I dip in and out, um, in places, but I pretty much, you know, when I'm watching YouTube outside of content for my channels, um, I am watching fashion bloggers and trash and trash, uh, trashy YouTube. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I don't know what everyone else is talking about. I do, I do tune in here and there. I mean, I definitely went over to Nyla's channel when she put out all the info on Sonia. And I mean, you know, that quietly when the information was coming out that it was someone else. And I told you guys, it's not Sonia Jackson. That's not her in Memphis. I, I, you know, that's not her. Um, she's in Florida. And also because the DA said Florida, the DA is not going to say Florida and it's like Kansas city. You know what I mean? They said Florida for a reason. Um, so I knew it was not Memphis also because I had her phone number from my call log that I have. So the call logs are, um, actual phone numbers. And all you have to do is put a phone number, put your phone number in Google and see what happens. You, if you've never done it before, you might be shocked. Um, but it basically is a caller ID search. So unless you have an unpublished, you know, you have a unlisted number, I don't know what it does now, but so many, keep in mind, so many credit card companies, so many of the apps that you guys use, sell your information. Um, it almost doesn't matter if you have a unpublished or private number. It almost doesn't matter anymore because they're pulling phone numbers from so many different places to populate. And I wouldn't be surprised if they are buying from, you know, they even, I mean, so many companies sell data. So, um, anyway, I'm going to let y'all go. It's, it's been like an hour and 20 minutes, unless there's anything else you guys want to know from me. Um, it was, it was interesting. I mean, it was worth the 12 bucks and, you know, um, I used some of my, like I said, my internet play money funded by bougie gang in my cash app account to pay for it. So I really do appreciate that. And, um, that's why I came immediately after to give you guys the tea because I did it. So you guys won't have to, you like the channels with the receipts and the facts. <laughs> So do I. That's what I like too. Um, I there is nothing better than a good receipt drop, right? I love that's my favorite. If someone were to ask me, like, what's your favorite YouTube? A good old drop of some receipts, okay? <laughs> and a read. <laughs> that's that's my kind of YouTube, right? And and a good fashion vlog, a good fashion week, or a nice cooking video every now and again. Um, that's what I like anyway. Okay, guys, I'll see you guys in the morning. Um, happy holidays, everyone. It is December 1st. It's the Christmas season. Um, it is, it's the holiday season. It's the end of the year season. So whatever it is that you celebrate, I hope that you enjoy it because this is the time of year, um, that we start to reflect and plan and also crush 
Do not forget, as we are planning for 2024, I would be remiss in saying you still have 30 days to handle that business. Today is almost, today's, it's over now. Today, it's already the second. You have one less day this month to crush your goals. If you have a goal and you there's something that you needed to do before 2023 ends, I'm going to bother you because I'm going to remind you as many times as I remember to say it. Get it done because you don't want to carry it over to next year. If it's something that you can crush in the next 30 days, which you can do a lot in 30 days, um, get it done now so you can start 2024 on a win. Don't start 2024 feeling like you're in a deficit and in regret and not having done something. Trying and a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you just from me, for instance, with this channel, I had this channel up, uh, this channel, Real Talk Bougie. Um, I can't, I'm not going to give you real dates, but I started this channel. I was piddling around. Any of you guys who know me from Love, Lies and Lace Fronts, I started this channel. I would I would come over here like once a month, once every blue moon. And I, I told my husband, I was like, I got to just get over there and get started. And he was like, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And I was like, oh, da, da, da. so I started saying, you know what? Lunchtime, it's come around lunchtime, whatever. And then like the Shirley case happened and Kiki and I don't know, Met Gala and all the stuff over the summer. Um, and I just started posting a few times a week. And I'm telling you, I wasn't even really getting that much views. Um, it was it was okay, but it was like a little something, something, something here and there and everything and whatever. And then this topic, I went one month, I had like 45,000. Was it 45,000 views? It was 45,000 views, right? That month. I had over a thousand subscribers. I had maybe like 2000 subscribers. Let me tell you guys something. 90 days ago, I had 2000 subscribers over here. Today, I'm almost at 10K, okay? That's what having a trending topic will do for you. I went one month, I had 45,000 views. The next month, I had over half a million. If you look on my about page, I've got over a million views on this channel and the million views really have come because of this topic. Within the last 90 days, I've increased almost 8,000 subscribers and I've gotten over a million views. I'm just saying, don't feel like it's always going to be a mountaintop and I have not had a one viral video. I've had maybe, I've had a video get it up as high as like 64,000, something like that. Um, it doesn't have to be a hundred thousand video. It's just the everyday grind. I just want to encourage anyone out here. That's something that's deep in my heart is to encourage you guys because I just feel like YouTube, social media is one of the next waves of empowerment and a way for women to make money and men for anyone to make money. And it's just too, I don't want to say it's too simple because it is very complicated. It takes effort and dedication. But if it's something that's on your heart to do or to use to further your business, you got to do it. And it doesn't take a lot. And don't be discouraged. I would sit here and be in a live with like 10 people. But I love, you know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Because I knew on the replay or one day people are going to come back. So don't be discouraged. Like, I, could, I sat here this week. I had 1,400 people. I've never had 1,400 people in my life before. And I was looking at the number and I said, you know what? I'm going to still do this. Like, I got 10 people in here because... It's, it's, it's about the content because each individual person, you know, makes up that number. Um, but you know, I just, like I said, I, it's all my heart to give that encouragement that anything that you want to get done, you can get done. And 30 days is a lot of time there's, you know, and, um, don't go into 2024, not ready and prepared. Um, and you can do that even more so by handling that business and, uh, jump on whatever it is. Uh, whether it's a YouTube channel or just, you know, doing whatever it is that you wanted to get done. I'm giving you some encouragement. Tomorrow is Saturday. Um, create a plan and work your plan. Plan your work and work your plan, right? We've all heard that before. Thank you to all of the super chats. Let me just say another quick round of thank you to Gloria and Chef and Valdenise, Jen, um, Love TB, 
Amber, Miss HLS, Lisa Lulu. Thank you so much. I hope I didn't forget anyone. Lisa, Miss HLS, Amber, Love, TB, Jen F, Valdenise, Chef, and Gloria. You guys, thanks for supporting. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all of the viewers out here, all of you supporters and subscribers, new subscribers. Thank you. And I appreciate all that you guys do. This was so much fun. And I'm so glad that we could recap tonight. Sometimes it's nice to not show a whole bunch of video and have to do a whole bunch of like screen work where I can actually like read your comments and talk to you guys. So this was really fun and I enjoyed it very much. Um, like I said, I'll get into the video tomorrow and then I'll get back with y'all tomorrow and we can like finish this up. We won't go from the beginning because basically this was a good recap of the full first part. If I see that I forgot anything, I'll I'll get on it. But as far as where I left off, that's where we'll pick up tomorrow. Okay. You guys take care. Have a wonderful evening and I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Have a good night. Hit the like button for me. Thank you. Bye.